Hello and welcome back for our next episode of Ask Kate. Today I want to talk a little bit about how having NF1 and growing up with NF1 can impact children both in social settings as well as at school. About a year ago I was able to conduct an interview with Jim Hubbard. Jim is a school psychologist and a counselor and in addition to 33 years of experience working in schools with children with different learning um, struggles and challenges, Jim himself lives with NF1. Uh, this was an excellent interview that we conducted and made available, but I thought today I would just review a little bit of what Jim shared with us that I thought might be helpful for parents as they are trying to help their fighters achieve and, and succeed at school. So one of the questions that I spoke about with Jim was what should parents understand about the purpose and the function, even the laws, surrounding what's called an IEP, <clears throat> which stands for the Individualized Education Plan. There's also something called a 504 plan. So these are terms that you might hear as your kid is entering school um, and, and starting to try to assess how they're doing and if they are facing any additional challenges while at school. So I'm going to talk about them sort of together at first. The 504 and the IEP can serve many different purposes. It's designed to consistently support a student's progress. This can mean reviewing their strengths and weaknesses, monitoring their progress as they go through the year, assessing different learning styles, and trying to create positive learning experiences for children who might just need a little extra help or support in unique ways. Um, an IEP or 504 is created when a parent meets with several members of the staff at a school. This will generally include that student's teacher, uh, the principal or assistant principal, a school psychologist, a social worker, um, who's at the meeting can, can change um, or be different in each building, but it will usually be several members of the team um, that will help to care for and educate your child. These meetings are actually legal contracts. They're protected by laws um, that what is agreed upon as to what meets the child's needs um, is what the school will stick to and they will provide those things. Um, the IEP in the 504 um, is, is to there to ensure that the plan that's created with the team of parent and staff that's a school is being followed. So that's important to know that when you sign an IEP for your child, this is a legal contract that you have um, signed with the school and they are expected to follow those uh, guidelines or additional helps or support um, supports for your child. Um, so. I think another really important question for NF is how important is it that the IEP team uh, not only know about my child's diagnosis of NF1, but also maybe have some specific understanding of what NF1 and how it might impact my kid at school. So what information would be most important to share with, that, with the team since clearly we can't expect them to have a, a broad and in-depth knowledge of all the aspects of NF. So um, we believe that it's very important that the team at your child's school be aware of how NF will impact their learning or could impact their learning. It, obviously we know with NF1 that there's a broad spectrum and the variability is significant um, not only with their physical or medical uh, health but also with their psychological health and the way that they learn and function at school and with their peers. So kids with NF can have difficulties with attention, fine or gross motor skills, meaning you know, kind of using a pencil, um, you know, gluing things on, or participating fully in their physical education classes. Those would be gross motor skills, those big movements. Um, they can have difficulty with speech development, visual spatial abilities, auditory processing. So there's a lot of ways that NF could affect your child, but may or may not. So school personnel should really be informed about how they're, about the child's current medical status. Of course, if there's any um, medical issues that are happening where your child might be missing school or, um, or having procedures done that could impact them at school, that's going to be important for them to be aware of. Um, that information can be gathered from medical personnel ahead of time as you're going into your IEP meeting, and you can discuss with your NF doctor kind of what information is most important to share with the school staff. Um, also, of course, considering that you have a right to privacy and that it's up to you what you decide to share. Um, the school should also be aware of your child's strengths. So it can seem sometimes when a child needs an IEP that all we're talking about is all of the ways that they are 
failing or struggling or behind their peers, but we know that every fighter, every child has things about them that are beautiful and that are their strengths. And so it's really important that an IEP meeting include a discussion about the ways that your child is already flourishing and succeeding. Um, every child living with NF is different and they're always developing, so things are always changing. So just keeping the school um, up to date and having that open communication about any new issues or, or medical complications, anything that's coming up that could impact your child when they're at school. So an IEP really should be considered also an ongoing process throughout your child's um, school career. So the next thing I want to talk about is what type of evaluation assessments would be recommended to differentiate between the child's strengths and weaknesses. So kind of how do we identify what they're struggling with? Um, so a comprehensive evaluation should include, but doesn't need to be limited, to social and adaptive behavior, so how they're interacting with their peers, um, visual motor skills, their memory, health and developmental history, intellectual assessments, attention skills, speak, speech and language abilities and development, um, if that's an area of concern. Um, in addition, it's crucial that a really qualified individual observe the child in their classroom and, and on the school grounds, out on the playground, in their special classes like art or PE, um, somebody who understands what they're looking for, assessing um, kind of how your child is functioning in all these different spaces. So. This can often include also what's called a neuropsych evaluation. So a, a professional neuropsychologist would do a, um, an in-depth learning assessment with your child that would cover a lot of these areas and can give the school really great information about how to best work with your kid and, and just really help them to succeed and, and enjoy their time in school. So the last thing I want to talk about is kind of the difference when it comes to the IEP and the 504 plan. So for some kids, they might not qualify for an IEP because they don't have significant learning disabilities that qualifies them for the special education program. So a 504 plan can be addressed for those children. It can be developed um, to address additional um, uh, areas of support that are needed. Um, schools may also have uh, learning labs or after school tutoring, um, different um, opportunities available that could really help your kiddo. A 504 is still a legal binding contract. Um, it's just uh, slightly different in the way that it's developed than an IEP, and it's really designed for those kids who don't quite meet those needs or those standards for needing uh, more special education support. Um, but please keep in mind something that some parents are not aware of is that with the diagnosis of NF1, many children do qualify for an IEP under what's called other health impaired which means that even though they might not demonstrate a learning disability that's significant enough to qualify for special education services, this health impairment of NF, um, if it substantially impacts their educational progress um, and creates academic needs that can't be addressed through traditional classroom learning, then often they can qualify for an IEP using that, um, that diagnosis of other health impaired. Uh, meaning I have a health condition that's really impacting my ability to function and learn and participate in school. So I hope this has been helpful. I know it's just really basic information and there's so much more that could be said about this. We really are thankful to Jim Hubbard and the way that he was um, supportive of CTF and the NF community and wanting to share his expertise. And um, I'm happy to talk about this further, always, of course. If you want to reach out to me, you can email me and, and ask additional questions, or you can leave questions in the comments. And as always, I want to remind you that if you have an idea for a topic that I could discuss, please leave a comment and share that with me. I might not get to it right away, but I love seeing those, and I love seeing what it is that you're interested in and knowing more about. It could be something related to NF1, NF2, schwannomatosis. It could be questions about the foundation. I'd, I'd be happy to talk more about what CTF is doing in, um, in any area that might interest you. So thanks for tuning in, and have a great day, everyone. See you next time.